Hey designers, I just got the new Wacom Intuos Pro 2025 version and I am going to give you my honest opinion about the difference between this one and the Wacom Intuos Pro from 2017. This is going to help you to determine if it is the right thing to upgrade for yourself. So first we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the differences between them. As you can see, it is a much thinner tablet and the keys, the express keys and the dial have been moved to the top as opposed to the side. The great thing about the thinness of this tablet is that you can rest your wrist in a better way. It's, it's more ergonomic. It doesn't strain the wrist. Now I know this sounds like maybe it's not a big deal, but over time I did notice that my wrist would get strained. I never even realized why, but this great thin new design is super helpful to make sure that that doesn't happen. The other thing that we're gonna look at is this pen comes with this tablet. So this is a new Pro Pen 3 and it's fully customizable. The great thing is also if you prefer the Pro Pen 2 that was with the 2017 version, it connects with this tablet. So you can keep using both. Now we're gonna look at the different components of the pen so you can see how you can customize it for your own liking. This is how the pen comes normally, but you can take this set of keys off and replace it so that if you would prefer to not have anything there, this is just blank and you just snap it in very easily. You can also do it so that there is different heights depending on what your preference is. You can also replace it with this. See, this one's more curved, this one is straight. You can play around with what you would prefer to have. And then this is the holder for the pen and you just open it and there's a whole set of nibs which are the top part here. So you can replace those. There's the standard ones which come in here and then there are also, these ones are rubber and felt, rubber felt. So they're really a nice different feel to the top here and you can decide which you would prefer. Lots of different options to make it easier for you. A huge bonus of this tablet is the connectivity. Now this is something that I had noticed in the 2017 version. I'm not sure if any of you experienced this, but sometimes I would be mid a design and it would lose connectivity. And even when I would log into the computer again after it was on sleep mode, it would take about 30 seconds to connect. That does not happen with the new 2025. I've been using it for over a week. It would have already shown up by this point because they put, there's some fancy words for it, the new IC chip and digitizer. But what, what that essentially means is they put a new brain. So it has a much better connectivity, more sensitive. It has a sensor layer that captures the information and the connection between the computer and the tablet is beautifully seamless. So there is no losing of that connection, which is to me worth every penny of this upgrade. Now the tablet also has the ability to have a USB connection. So you can have it plugged into your desktop or your laptop if you choose, or if you would like to not have it connected and you're going on a trip or something of that nature, and you're going to be out for the day, you want to have it connected to your laptop. The Bluetooth, it has two Bluetooth modes. So you can have it as one of those modes connected to your desktop and another one connected to a laptop. You just switch it here and that will help to do that. Now, when you come back, because this has 16 hours of battery life. So when you come back to the tablet and your computer after you've been away for a little bit, it has gone to sleep mode to preserve that battery life. So you just click the button here and it will help to restart it, get it back up and running in just a matter of seconds. That's a great feature so that you don't have to worry about carrying around the cable if you're gonna just be gone on a day trip. Now we're gonna be talking about some of the features that I think designers will really love. I'm gonna show you in the Wacom Center on the computer. So if you don't know how to get to the Wacom Center, you just go to System Preferences and you go to, I would recommend not just going to the Wacom tablet, but going to Wacom Center. And you wanna launch that. And what this does is it will tell you how to control the different aspects of your tablet. 
Something that's really cool I want to point out first is if you don't like having these express keys and the dials up at the top, which can be a bit of a getting used to when you're used to it on the side, you can go and switch the orientation of the tablet. So if I click on this one, it's going to go to portrait mode and now it's going to be on the right side. Now I wouldn't do this because then I can't reach over. It's a little bit hard, but something that I've been playing with is having it so that it is, it's kind of funny there. I got to keep it there on that orientation, having it. So it's flipped. So this would be like this. And then the express keys and everything would be on the bottom, which is something I think is a bit easier to deal with than having it on the top if your workflow is that way. Now, I usually have my tablet off to the side, so having it here might be a little bit harder, but it's just something you can play with whatever works for your workflow. You can also have them so they're on the side, and that would be on this side. So this is your work workstation, and uh, again, it's just your preference, but they give you the option to choose, which I love that because you don't get stuck with just what, wherever they are located. We're going to then go through here. You can see it says you can use the pro pen too. So it allows you to customize that if you're using the old pen. Now this one does not come with the pro pen two. It only comes with the pro pen three, but again, if you want to use your old pen, it has that option. So you can come here and customize the different, this one has three keys. So you can customize what each one of these do by going and just clicking on that. So this is the far back one and you can decide what you would like the action to do. Same for the middle and the other one as well. Now, this one is going to allow you to change the sensitivity. So if you want it to be a softer sensitivity, you can test it here. Or if you want it medium, this is how I like it, or more firm, it's harder. You have to press down harder to get that, uh, that reaction of the pen. So I prefer to keep it in the middle. You can also customize what the pen does for all applications. So it'll always work the same on no matter what program you're working in, or you can customize it per application. So let's say we wanted to go to Photoshop and we wanted to do specific actions that only happen in Photoshop. You can go here and you can choose it for Photoshop. And it, when it's not in Photoshop, it will not be using those. It'll go back to the way you have it customized for the other ones. You can also add other applications if you would like that unless you don't, in case you don't have them here, you just choose which application you would like to customize it to. And it has that ability to do that. Now the express keys. So these are the keys that are right here at the top, not the dials. These are the dials that'll come next, but the express keys are at the top and you can go around and choose that middle button, the top left, bottom and right to do as you please. Same for over here. Now, what we've, what I've heard from other designers is they just prefer to use keyboard shortcuts. But if you want, if you're all into express keys and you want to make things easier for you, this is the way to do it. Use, customize them to your workflow, whatever specific actions you use more than others. Then we can go to the dials. So I always have this one on auto scroll and zoom and this one on brush size, but you customize it as you want you can do as you wish and make it custom per application as well. Then the mapping you can see here, I have it to full display. And let's say you have two screens, you can figure out how you want it to react between the two screens and, and the toggle cycles of your cursor, which can be helpful if you have a setup where you have multiple screens. If you prefer to have on, on the tablet shortcuts where you are using it and you want to have it mapped to your specific tablet, you can then customize those and have shortcuts here. I do not like having those on because it can kind of be hard to balance those when I'm working and I accidentally press a shortcut. But if that's something you like to do and you're used to that workflow, it's available. You just go to the on-screen shortcuts. Something else worth noting is if you get confused or you don't remember something and you don't necessarily want to go back to a YouTube video to figure it out in the Wacom Center itself, they have these specific tutorials to help you set up the tablet to your liking. And the last thing I'm going to mention is that this is where you set up your Bluetooth 
and connect it to the devices that you choose. So to sum up all the pros and cons, so you can really determine if this is the right upgrade for you. The first pro is the absolute game changer for me, which is this connectivity. And that would be the thing I really want you to think about for your workflow, if that's gonna really help. I would really consider that for getting this new tablet. It makes a huge difference. Next is the drawing space itself is much bigger while taking up less space on your desk. And then you can customize your pen or you can use the old pen if you loved that one and you don't want to let it go. And it also has up to 16 hours of battery life without the cable. Super helpful if you need that for going on outings or work trips and you don't want to carry around the cables. Now, the only real cons there are is that maybe you got to get used to that muscle memory of where the express keys are. But again, you can customize where you put the tablet. And the other thing is, I know it's more of an investment, these newer ones, but it's just like an upgrade every, I mean, they haven't released any new tablet since 2017. So if you got it in 2017, now it's about how many years, eight years later, we got this new tablet. I think it's a real great upgrade. It's such great quality. These tablets last forever. I've had my other tablet that was before the 2017 for many, many years. It's still reliable if I ever need it. So these, that's why Wacom is the top in this whole tablet market. They always are very reliable. They help, they help you make your workflow easier. So that's what I have to say. You can determine based on these points if it's the right thing for you. And if you do decide, I would love to hear how you are enjoying using it or if you decided to get the Wacom Intuos Pro 2025. This is the large, by the way. So there's other options. You can get the medium or the small. Thank you so much for watching and keep creating. I'll see you next time.